Hello, it's Scott Manley here. On Monday, we had big news for Firefly Aerospace. They announced that they have signed on with Northrop Grumman to build a new first stage for the Antares rocket. So the Antares rocket is one of two launch vehicles that is currently launching cargo to the International Space Station. The Antares carries the Cygnus spacecraft, which uh, is slightly better in some ways for carrying cargo to the International Space Station because it uses the larger berthing adapters and they can move hardware through it that can't go through the docking uh, port. But um, it's also the only way that they can dump cargo out of the International Space Station because it, it actually burns up, whereas Dragon comes back to the surface. And finally, Cygnus is important because it's the only one of the US launch vehicles that has demonstrated the ability to boost the space station into a higher orbit. And there had been a lot of questions about what would happen to Antares, because Antares is a very international rocket. It was designed by Orbital Sciences back in the 2000s, specifically to launch cargo to the International Space Station. This was when NASA was looking for commercial partners, and they initially signed a contract with SpaceX and rocket plane Kistler, and Kistler couldn't raise the money they needed from investors, so Orbital Sciences were awarded a contract instead, and they came up with this rocket that was a hybrid from many, many countries, right? Like, the Cygnus spacecraft is largely American, but the pressure vessel is European. The second stage uses a Castor 30 solid rocket motor, which uh, is American-built. The first stage booster is built in Ukraine by Erner, Joe Mash, and the engines are built in Russia. And when you hear those last two, you can now see why there might be a problem going forward with Antares. Indeed, there are apparently two Antares boosters in stock right now, and very unlikely that we will see more of them in the future. So, uh, Firefly are going to build a new first stage for this. And what they're basically doing is they're taking their Firefly Beta, which was going to be the successor to their Firefly Alpha, changing it so it's the same height and fits into the existing launch infrastructure for Antares. And yeah, then they're going to they're gonna have their own second stage for Firefly Beta, but Antares, uh, you know, it's already integrated with the Cygnus second stage, or the Cygnus and the, the second stage. So that's what's going to be on the Northrop Grumman side for now. And, you know, if you look at this, I'm pretty sure this is investors very specifically looking at Northrop Grumman acquiring Firefly at some point, right? This is a way for the investors to get some eggs. And there's there's been some financial questions in the last year or so for unfortunate reasons, but we'll we'll get more back to that. So yeah, um, Northrop Grumman, they actually acquired Antares when they acquired Orbital ATK, which was itself made of orbital sciences that had acquired orbit, uh, Alliant Tech Systems. Northrop Grumman, they have a couple of launch vehicles, but more importantly, many of the launch vehicles in the US, with the exception of Falcon 9, Astra, and uh, Rocket Lab, they, have, they use these solid rocket motors, right? SLS has these big solid rocket motors to boost it. Guess what? Those are built by Northrop Grumman. The Atlas V, it has these solid rocket motors on it. Again, those are built by uh, Northrop Grumman. Vulcan is going to have those same solid rocket motors. But Northrop Grumman doesn't really have a good launch vehicle of its own. It has bits and pieces that haven't really managed to substantially capitalize on the market. They, they have the Pegasus, which really doesn't fly anymore because it's too expensive and can't be competitive with other launch vehicles. It was great when it first came along. It was transformative in the market, but it hasn't really changed and the costs haven't come down enough. There's the Minotaur, which can only be used for US government launches because it has the first stage is a Minuteman missile and then the upper stages are Pegasus. They tried to have the Omega, which was terrible branding, but that was basically a bunch of solid rocket motors stacked together in the hope that the Pentagon would give them money to develop it. That never went anywhere. And they have Antares, which has gone through few iterations and is now going to have to go through another one. And Teres, as I said, it was given this contract back in like 2007, 2008, uh, and it was built out of all these different parts from all these different countries very quickly so that they could satisfy the requirements. Initially, it had the 100 series was famously powered by Kuznetsov NK33 engines, which had been 
basically rebranded as AJ-26 engines by Aerojet Rocketdyne. The story with the NK-33 is these were originally built for the N-1 rocket, the giant Soviet moon rocket, which unfortunately was cut down in its prime and that left a lot of engines sitting around which some idiot ordered destroyed and some smart person put in a warehouse instead because these were amazing engines at the time and they are still pretty damn good engines right now. Uh, they had the best thrust to weight ratio I believe and they were stage combustion, they were like you know super high performance. Now the RD-181 and 171, those were all derived from this, but this is the original and you know has many cool things about it. Unfortunately, a few launches into using them for Antares, they had a, a failure which had not really been seen during like the first 15 seconds of launch and the rocket fell back and was one of the biggest and most spectacular rocket failures in recent years. So uh, the decided to re-engineer the first stage. What they did was they took new, took a modernized engines, RD-181 engines. These are basically the same as the RD-180 that's used on the Atlas V, but for licensing reasons, they're two separate engines rather than one engine with two, uh, you know, two combustion chambers. Um, so that actually, those were slightly more powerful. So the original NK-33s, I think they generated about 150 tons of thrust. The RD-181s generated 190. They actually had to under-throttle them because otherwise the rocket would accelerate too much and they would have max Q that would be higher than they would like. In the meantime, between these, by the way, they flew a couple of Cygnus flights on an Atlas V. So now the 300 series is going to be the Firefly Beta. And that the Firefly Beta is a design that sort of changed around. Firefly Alpha is what... Uh, Firefly are currently working on. It's a small launch vehicle able to put like one ton into an equatorial, uh, into a low orbit. It uses four Reaver engines and if you know the Firefly TV show you'll instantly pick up on the fact that Reavers are bad guys, you know, crazed space mutants. The Firefly Beta originally it uh, originally it was just going to be three Firefly Alphas bolted together Falcon Heavy style now it's a separate booster and it, they've shrunk it down and made it slightly fatter and they put seven, and they were going to be Reaver 2, but now they're called Miranda engines. And again, if you're a fan of Firefly and you really, really remember, you might remember that Miranda was the secret planet on the far side of Reaver space where people had just, you know, given up and died due to like, you know, mind control drugs or something like that. Yeah. So these engines are generating about 100 tons of thrust each. They're going from 380 tons to 700 tons of thrust on that first stage. That leaves a substantial, that's a pretty substantial performance change. I'm not sure how that's going to, what they're going to do with all that extra performance. I think it's just going to translate to more performance to orbit. But hypothetically, with seven small engines, they could seriously turn this booster into a recoverable booster, and I think that might be the plan for Firefly Beta going forward. So that's what we're going to see. Uh, we have, in the meantime, we have two Fire, uh, two Antares 230 boosters that are going to fly, and then there are going to be three flights on SpaceX Falcon 9 in the meantime. So that gives them basically three years before they're ready for their first flight, and that seems fast but doesn't seem unreasonable. Firefly Alpha we hope to see have a successful launch in the coming months. They're on this stand ready to fly again at Vandenberg. Last year if you remember they did launch they had one engine failure due to like a, an electrical connector 15 seconds into launch and that meant they struggled upwards and eventually lost control once they you know were transiting through the sound uh, not through the sound barrier through the transonic region is the, the right way to say that and that you know they are sent debris all over the place the firefly alpha is one of the largest carbon fiber composite things ever flown uh, so the the reaver engines on that they generate like 18 tons of thrust they use what's called a combustion tap off cycle that's basically a way you simplify the rocket. Instead of having a separate gas generator where you burn some of the propellant and blow it through the turbines to power the pumps and power, you know, power the engine, you instead have a pipe that just goes from the combustion chamber. You cool that gas and then run that through the turbine. 
so you don't have to have a separate gas generator. In some ways, it simplifies the engine. It you know, makes other things more complex, but you know, in their opinion, that was the way to go. Uh, Firefly was originally founded by a guy called Tom Markusik, who still works on it, although I think he's now just on the board rather than actually actively working in the field. Now, the thing is, this is actually the second version of Firefly that we've seen, because Firefly originally started out, again, making something like the, the Alpha, but it was going to use a pressure-fed aerospike engine. That company went out of business and then was resurrected with funding from a guy called Max Polyakov, who is a Ukrainian businessman, made a lot of money in internet dating websites, apparently, and decided he wanted to get into rocket science. He brought in, actually, a lot of Ukrainian talent. So uh, Firefly, they had a bunch of work or offices and engineers in Ukraine building stuff, you know, doing big 3D printing, designing specific things. And that actually led to some problems right at the end of last year where the large ownership of Firefly by a non-US businessman, specifically someone that might be in a situation where his assets are owned by Russia, was seen to be a potential security threat and he was required to basically divest himself of Firefly. And that wasn't a good thing to happen because it kind of forced him to sell out very, very quickly and that really doesn't look good. I think in the end, he sold a substantial chunk of Firefly to Tom Markusik for $1. I don't think that worked out very well for him, unfortunately, which is really a shame because he's the one that made this happen. I do think that what's, what's happening now is you had other investors come in to cover some of that stuff. They probably bought it at bargain prices and they are now looking at a reliable way to exit and make some money off of this. And so if they can get Northrop Grumman basically dependent on Firefly. It's only a matter of time until they end up potentially buying Firefly. That's my prediction. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, there's a lot of other options going forward. So yeah, um, big news, obviously. Firefly also has business with uh, Astra. Astra's new rocket is going to use the, the first stage, the, the Reaver engines, I believe, or they're going to use their own variants of it. Uh, Firefly also have their Blue Ghost Lunar Lander, which isn't flying on a Firefly rocket, it's flying on a Falcon 9, but that's a, a separate thing, which again, all very cool stuff. So going forward, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with Antares. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.